Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi. Hari is Daf Yud Gimel. We begin right on top with the words Kapar Goy Moshuach Upar Eda Bechulu. So we're faced with a choice. We have the par for the Kohen Gadol for his sin. We have the par for the general public on account of their sin. Two uh, Karbani standing before us. Which one goes first? The Mishnah says the one of the Kohen Moshuach takes priority. That goes first. Benani Mili. How do we know this? The Tanur Abana we learned in Abraisa. This is the pasuk regarding par ha'eda, the public par. V'saraf oisa, it's meant to be burnt. Kasher saraf, just as they burnt, as a par in the first par, meaning the par of the kohen Mashuach, which is mentioned earlier in the pasuk. Now this uh, phrase seems to be redundant because it already says in, in the previous pasuk, v'asal par kasher asal par achatas, that the same that was done to the original par is done to this one as well. So why repeat again that this is meant to follow? the Parakon Mashiach's, you know, process. Matam Ulemar, Harishan, why does the Pasuk have to add that we do this the way we did the first one? It's to tell us that there is a first and there's a second. Shehei Harishan, that the Parakon Mashiach comes before Koidim Lepar in terms of Bechol Masav, its entire Akrava process. Now we know the Parakon Mashiach comes first. We learned in the price regarding the order of priority regarding Choices of carbonates before us. So we start with the uh, first one, Par Koy Mashiach versus Upar Edoim, both standing before us. Which one goes first? As we said, Par Koy Mashiach Koydem. It comes before the Par Edo Bechal Masov, and the reason is Hoyl U Mashiach Mechaper. So this price gives us another reason. Since the, the Koy Mashiach himself is a Mechaper, right? He's the one that brings the carbonates, he's the lead, Koy Gadol, entrusted with. Atoning for the public, right? Ve'eda mischa peres. So basically, the kain mashiach is the one that's going to be machaper on the rest of the of the nation. Ve'eda mischa peres. Whereas the aid of the nation, the public is receiving the kapara through this carbon. So it makes more sense that first he has to sort of fix his own wagon, clean up his slate before he can address and attend. To everybody else's kapar dinu, she It makes sense she yagdim a machaper. At first, the machaper, the kohen gadol, has to address his own deficiencies and his kapara before la mischaper. Before we address the the carbon, which is meant to be machaper on his recipients, so to speak. Chenu Aimer, as we find in similar fashion, on Yom Kippur, the kohen gadol first takes care of himself, and once his slate is clean. He can turn around and take care of everybody else. First, he's Mechaper himself and his family. And then, Uva'ad, the rest of the nation, Ba'ad Kol Chakal Yisrael. What if we have a choice between a par hill and Davashal Tzibur, right, the public par, and we have the par of Avayda Zorah. So basically, they did two things wrong. They were misled by the Bezin to eat, you know, Chalev, which generates a standard par hill and Davashal Tzibur, and also to do Avayda Zorah. Which generates a par, which is going to be an oila, right? A regular par halam davar is a chatas, but a par of avodah the par is an oila, and you also bring a soyer as a chatas. So the par halam davar shal tzibur, which is in effect a chatas, koydem, takes priority over la par shal Why my time? The high, because the first one is a chatas. The high, but the one for avodah is actually an oila. And chatas precedes an oil of a tanya, as we learned in a brisa, where a fellow brings a pair of birds, one a chatas, one oila. Which one's first? V'yikriv es asher lechatas rishona. The chatas comes first. Why does the pasuk have to say this? Matam olaim. What's the point? Im lelamid shtei chatas rishona. If it's to tell us a sequence, chatas is number one. We already know that from elsewhere. Harik far nemar v'sasheni yaso oila kamishpat. We have the pasuk which says the second one is the oila. Automatically, the first one is the chatas, right? El Zeban Av. It's coming to teach us a general formula to provide a precedent to elsewhere as well. When you have a chatas and oila together, which one's first? Shu kol chatois, koid mois la oilois, habois imayim. That when a chatas accompanies an oila, the chatas comes before the oila. First you atone, and then you bring your gift, right? V'kaim alon. In fact, we learn to this extent. Sha da filu chatas oiv koidemes lo las 
one word to bring. A chata's bird with an animal oil. You think the animal goes first? No. First the chata's despite it only being a bird, chata's before an oil. Okay, next question. If you have a par of which we learned is an oil, with the sire of Avedizar, which is an oil, which is a chata's, which one's first? Says the Gemara, par of Avedizar, come before, lisir of amai. The obvious question is, what do you mean? Hai chata's, vai oil. The par is an oil. Versus the sawyer, which is chatas. And chatas is meant to come first. Amri Marava, and her stroller responded, Mishmei in the name of the Rava Bar Here it's an exceptional case. Chatas, because the way the Torah writes, records the word chatas of the Avodis Kechavim, it's with a missing letter. The word is missing, chasira the Aleph. Lechatas, right? Without the Aleph, Ksiv, that's how it's said. To indicate that in fact, uh, this chatas is not like an ordinary chatas, rather, it's meant to go as number two after the oil. Rav Amar, another reason why, in this case, the oil comes first, because the, the Pasuk uses the word kamishpat, the way it's said, in the order, the way it's sequenced in the Torah. From kamishpat ksibbe, it has that word to indicate that we follow the order of the psukim, where the, the oil is enumerated first. So here it's an exceptional case. The oil comes before the chattas. Continues the, the Gemara. Suppose we have a choice between a, a soyer, right, the second carbon of the, um, you know, the tzibur's avodah and you have the nasi, the king, who sinned, and must bring a soyer, right? So you have the two goats. Which one's first? Seir avodah is koidem. Takes priority over the seir nasi. Why my timer? Well, high tzibur, This is for the public. Right? So it goes before the yach, the individual, despite the fact that he's a king. Seir Nasi, the sower of the Nasi, Koydim comes before the Seiras Yach, a private individual's Seira that he brings on account of doing something which, you know, uh, requires a chatas. So the Nasi's carbon goes first. My time, why? Well, Hai Melech, this is the carbon of a Melech. Certainly it goes before Vahay Yedyot, this fellow is an ordinary citizen, so he comes number two. Seiras Yach, Kademus Lekivsas Yach. You have two people bringing a karma chatas, which allows for a choice. You can bring a she-goat, a seira, you can bring a kivsa. Which one comes first? Okay, he brings a seira, he brings a kivsa. Says the, the b'raisa, seira siyachet, kodemas le kivsa siyachet. First you tend to the seira before the kivsa, vatanya. But we have a b'raisa, which switches it around. Kivsa siyachet, kodemas, comes before the seira siyachet. Rabbi Tanoi, actually, it's a machlekes tanoi. Mara Savar, one holds, seira difa. Seira takes priority. Why? Because it has, you know, added elements to it, which makes it a priority. Because we find that the seira has, you know, broader applications than the kivza. A private person does have a desire, he brings a seira. So we find that seira has many applications. And therefore, it's a higher level carbon. The other sheet says, no, kivza comes first. There's a part of, a, of an animal which is only around by the kifsa, the tail area, which is brought as a part of the carbon, which is something you don't do by a, a, a sawyer or a sira. So it's a greater, you know, broader carbon, therefore goes first. And finally, we have a choice regarding the aimer. That's the minchas aimer that brought, brought on the 15th day of Nisa. So with the aimer comes a, a, a sheep. Which one do you offer first? The aimer comes before. Likewise, the two breads on Shavuiz, come before Kaidmin Lakvasim Habayimam to the, uh, the sheep that come along with them. You know why? Zakla, because of this rule. Dabar begin Hayd Layayim. The carbon which is on account of the day itself, like the Aymer, Shte Alechem, it comes upon the occasion. So that's the primary carbon. And the animals that come along with it are merely secondary, accompanying that primary carbon. And therefore, the primary comes before the secondary. It comes before the carbonists that come on account of the lechem itself. They're sort of accompaniments and secondary to the mincha and or the lechem. Continues the Mishnah regarding um, you know, giving priority. In this case, it's in terms of saving people. You only have the ability, the resources to save one person. So if a man and a woman are in danger, you can only save one, 
First comes the man. Now, the point here is because we have to look at it from you know a spiritual lens. And since the, the ish has more opportunity to do mitzvahs, he's chayv and more mitzvahs. So that, that takes priority in terms of your chayv to save. Likewise, if you find an aved, a lost item, you can only return one or the other. You return the man's over the woman's. On the other hand, it's in terms of purchasing garments, supplying them with their clothing, man or woman, a woman takes priority because her shame, her embarrassment is much greater than a man's. So in this case, she takes priority. And also, <clears throat> if both are captive, both were kidnapped, you can only redeem one, you take the, man, the woman before the man because in her, in her case, there's a greater chance of Avera and shame. However, if you know for a fact, that both individuals are going to be susceptible to physical interaction and to Avera. In this case, you have to prioritize the man's fate over the woman's because in the case of a man with this type of activity, it's more shameful and embarrassing. Turn her up on him. Here comes a Bryce. So we have three people, Hayahu, the man himself, the other than his father, the rabbi and his, the man's rabbi, all sitting in prison, Bashevi. And he has the ability to redeem one, himself, his father, or his Rebbe. Which one's first? Who Kaidun Rabbi? Certainly he takes priority over everybody else. Right? Chayecha Kaidun. One's self is his ultimate, you know, responsibility. That comes first. But now in terms of number two. His Rebbe or his father. The Rabbi Kaidun Love. First comes the Rebbe over the father. Right? Because although his father brought him into this world and brought him up, but the Rebbe taught him, um, talking about, you know, a serious rabbi who taught him most of his Torah, right? So then, uh, Rabbi Muvak, that takes priority because he uh, he granted him eternity. Now let's say the mother is together there. Imo kedemis lakulam, the mother comes first. As we said before, a woman uh, is meant to be salvaged before anybody else. Chacham kaidim al melech Yisrael. In terms of priority, a chacham, a wise, an outstanding. Uh, a scholar comes before a king. Why? And again, we're speaking about uh, you know supporting, uh, you know saving from sakana, or taking out of uh, you know prison. So uh, the scholar, the chacham, takes priority over a king because a chacham is very hard to, to come by. One in a million, right? Chacham shemais. The chacham should die. Ain't lona kuyetzibai. You can't replace him. There's nobody else to take his place. But Melchi Yisrael shemais. A leader, a king, as great as he is, but you know what? He's not indispensable. Kol Yisrael ru'im l'malchus. Pretty much anybody in Kol Yisrael can serve as a king. Right? So uh, the loss isn't as, as profound. And therefore, the Chacham goes first. On the other hand, Melech Kain Kain Gadol. A king comes before Kain Gadol Shanamar. We have the Pasuk by David HaMelech when he turned to the Kain Gadol, Tzadik HaKain, Vayimra HaMelech, Lehem K'chuy Mochem, Es Abde Adonechem. So he, he told them to, you know, take along the uh, other servants of Adonechem, your master, i.e. himself, David HaMelech, uh, and anoint Shlom HaMelech as king, so he clearly referred to the Kain Gadol as his own servant. Apparently the king outranks the Kain Gadol. So the Kengadl and the Navi are mentioned together. And who uh, was listed first? Higdim Tzadok le Nosen. Tzadok the Kengadl came before Nosen. Kengadl before the Navi. Voimer, furthermore, we have a right to the same point from Apostle Shmana Yeshua Kengadl Atavere Echo. So you have the Kengadl. Together with his colleagues who were Nevi'im. We learn Kain Gadol comes before the Navi. Perhaps those colleagues were just plain people, not Nevi'im. Tama Leimar. The Pasa continues. He describes them as Ki'anshi Moifes Heima. Outstanding people, miraculous people. This Lashon refers to a Navi. So we see 
The Kohen Gadol comes before a Navi. What about different types of Kohen Gadolim? One is Mashiach B'Shem and Amishcha. He was anointed with that oil. And the other one was just a Mirubah B'Gadim. He wore the clothing, that's how. He got an augurate. He had no anointment. So the one that's Mashiach B'Shem and Amishcha stands higher. Kaidim Le Mirubah B'Gadim. On the other hand, Mirubah B'Gadim is Kaidim Kondi for Le Mashiach Shava Machmash Kiryai. A Kaidim Mashuach who is no longer serving because he became tummy at a carry. So the Mirubah B'Gadim who is currently serving is on a higher level. Next, Moshiach Sha'avar Machmas Kiryei. A Kohen Moshiach who is no longer serving because of a temporary, you know, Tumah interference. Kohen Lover Machmas Mumay. He stands higher than a Kohen Gadol who was replaced because he had a permanent Mumay. is not going to return to active duty. So the first one who is going to return stands higher. Avar Machmas Mumay. Kohen Lover Machmas Mumay. A Kohen Gadol who uh, lost his post because of a blemish. So it's a permanent removal, but he's still a Kohen Gadol. He doesn't lose that status. And therefore he comes before. He outranks a Meshach Muhammad, a Kohen Gadol who was merely appointed, anointed, to lead Jews into battle. So the first one, who's a leader in terms of Avoidah the Beis Hamidash, comes before the battle leader. Meshach Muhammad Kohen Gadol, Meshach Muhammad comes before a Skan, an assistant Kohen Gadol, a backup Kohen Gadol, who's not yet serving. Skan kaidim l'mamarkel. Skan is stands higher than the amarkel. That's the uh, you know, the executive director of the Beis Hamikdash. My amarkel. What is that? Amar of Chizda. Amar kol means Amar Kaila. He's in charge of everything. So certainly he's a leader, but he uh, is not on the same level as the skan kain gadol, who could potentially take over the uh, the kuna gadol. Amarkel. He comes before kaidim l'gizbar before the treasurer. Gizbar stands higher than the Kayan, who runs the Mishmar, the weekly rotation of Kayanim. Rosh Mishmar, Kaidem, he's considered higher than the Rosh Beis Av, the daily um, you know, uh, contingent of Kayanim, had a, a, we'll call the Beis Av. The leader of that daily contingent, he stands a, a notch lower than the um, weekly leader. Rosh Beis Av. The daily head, Kaidem the Kain Hedid, stands higher than the uh, regular, you know, rank and file Kain. Okay, so we have the whole sequence from top to bottom in terms of prioritizing when faced with a choice of saving, of supporting. Ibailu, it comes an Anaya Shaila. Lenin Tuma. So suppose you have two Kohanim who are faced with a, a Tuma situation. A mace mitzvah, an abandoned mace. Somebody has to take care of him. You have a skan, the uh, substitute, the assistant kain gadol, or mashoch mocham, the kain gadol, who uh, leads them into battle. Ezrem kaidem, who should be the one volunteering to become tummy? Basically, who's uh, you know the lesser important of the two? Amar marzutra by the Rav Nachman Tashma. The sanya. We have a price. Skan u'mashuach mocham, walking along the road shem alchem b'derech. U'poga b'hem meis mitzvah, and they encounter meis mitzvah. Who should become tamei? Says the brayse. I'll tell you. Mutav shi tamei mashuach mocham. Let him do it. Vali tamei skan rather than the skan. Why? Because he has to stay uh, available. He has to be on standby. Shem yera by psul b'kain gadol. Because if the kain gadol becomes pasul, he has to quickly step in. So his services are vital. You can't jeopardize his uh, you know, availability. Nichas has ganum, shamash tachto. Skan has to come right in and fill his space. So it's, it's a more you know, critical post. It can't be jeopardized. Vatanya, hold it, but we have a b'risa, which actually we just learned a minute ago, that Moshe Muhammad outranks the skan. Moshe Muhammad kaitan the skan. And here we say that Moshe Muhammad has to forfeit his position for the sake of the skan, I'm Ravina. It depends uh, in terms of what setting. Kitanya he, Lachiyah said that Brisa is speaking about supporting, saving the person. So in this case, Moshech Muhammad stands higher because, in terms of wartime, he's more needed than the skan. 
his services are more vital and critical. But in terms of Tuma, right, which is not a permanent situation. So again, if it's a question of you know saving a life, saving a life, this one or that one, the, the Meshuach stands higher. His services are more critical. But if they're both alive and well, who should become Tame, which temporarily puts him out of service? Shulchan Muhammad, because the scan must be available at moment's notice. Just in case the Kain Gadol becomes uh, disabled. Continues the Mishnah with uh, a list of uh, you know, priorities. So, ordinary people, Kain Levi in Yisrael, who comes first? Says the Mishnah, Kain, Kaidim Levi. Kain before the Levi, Levi, Yisrael, Yisrael becomes, comes before the Mamzer, Umamzer. Before the the, the Nasan, Kaidul Nasan, those uh, group of people, that group of people, the Nasinim, who tricked Yeshua to thinking they came from you know a distance, and he uh, he um, made a pact with them. They sort of you know joined our nation. Not really. They can't really marry in, but they sort of uh, you know bumped along with us. So the the Imams who comes before the Nasan, um, but the, the Nasan Kaidim comes before the the Ger, the Nasan the Ger. So the Nasina was somewhat gerim, and in fact they stand higher than a regular ger who just joined today because they've been around for a while. They've been part of our, you know, they've associated with us for, for years and years. The ger levet meshuchra. A ger comes before an evet kanani who had been serving yid and was now released, and he uh, becomes a, a full fledged yid now. But the ger is still on a higher level. Continues the Mishnah. A masai. When is this so? When does this uh, system of hierarchy hold true? When we're speaking about equals in terms of their Torah experience. But let's say you have somebody who is a, a great Talmud Chacham. Even a Mamzer, if he's a Talmud Chacham, versus even V'kayin Gadol, but he's an Amar, it's an unlearned fellow. Says the Mishnah, guess who comes first? Guess who takes priority? Mamzer, who's a Talmud Chacham, Kaidim, comes before the Kain Gadol, who's an Amaretz. So, although he's a Mamzer, began with very humble beginnings, he worked his way up. He elevated himself, elevated himself to the highest levels, saturated himself with Torah. He outranks a Kain Gadol, who's an Amaretz. Says the Gemara, Kain, Kaidim, Lelevi. How do we know that a Kain? Precedes a Levi Shanemar. Pasakin Divri Hayamim, Bene Amram, Aaron, and Moshe. These were the Levim, right? Ayibodel, Aaron, Nagdisha, Kadish Kadosha. Aaron, who was designated as the Koyen, was now elevated above and beyond the rest of his Shevet, Shevet Levi. How do we know Levi is Kaidem to Li Yisrael? Shinemar Ba Isahi Hibdal Hashem as Shevet Halevi. So Shevet Halevi in its entirety was separated and elevated Mitoich Vigaimer from the rest of the uh, of the Israel. What about Israel Kaidem Lu Mamzer? Why? Shezami Yuchas, because the Israel comes from you know upstanding lineage, as opposed to the Mamzer. He doesn't have the Yuchas. Advantage. Mamzer Kaidim Lenosin. He precedes the uh, the Nasin, the uh, the group of people who uh, who so called uh, joined our nation, but uh, were not really allowed to marry him. Why does Mamzer come first? Because Zeba mitipa kishera, vizeba mitipa pesula. Because a Mamzer comes from a father who, after all, is uh, is kosher. Is part of the uh, community, as opposed to the Nasan. His father is a Nasan and uh, unqualified. Tibab Sula, deficient uh, origin. A Nasan is Kaidim Lager. A Nasan takes priority over an ordinary Ger. Why? Because Because the Nasan, after all, was raised with us. As part of the community, he was uh, considered a yid. 
זה גודל אימנו בקדושה. וזה לא גודל אימנו בקדושה, אבל הגר, הוא שואל אותו תראה. So although he now converted and now joined completely and can marry in, unlike the, the Nassim, who stays separate, but after all, up until this point, he wasn't part of us. He was not raised in holiness. And finally, a gay is koidem le'evad m'shukhrer. He precedes the, uh, the Evad Kanani, who was now let, uh, set free. Why is that? Because zeha yibachlal or an Evad, a slave, was... Uh, Included in the in the curse in the order from Noach way back when when he said you know uh, that Canaan should be Eved Avadim Yel Echav he cursed him. There's an element of Kolalo attached to every every Eved, which uh, is not present by the Ger. So the Ger comes first. A Masab is Mashakul and Shavan. However, if the Mamzer even a Mamzer, if he worked his way up, he's a Talmud Chacham. He comes before a Kohen Gadol Amaris. Menachem Emili, how do we know this is so? Amar of Acha, Rav Chanina, the Makrove, the Pasuk in Mishlei, describing the the Torah Yikarhi, she's so precious. Mi Pninim, what's that? It's greater than the Kain Gadol, the Kain Gadol Shenichnas who enters once a year. Lifnai Lifnim, the inside chambers, the inner inners of the Beis Hamikdash. So, despite his high stature, a a person who's saturated with Torah is greater, more precious than that. Tanya. Rabban Shimra Chai Oimer. Bedinu Shiyagdim Evad Meshuch Leger. Says Rabbi Shimra Yechai, really, uh, an Evad Meshuch should come before the Ger. And the reason is, Shazer Godal Iman of Gedusha, Vizer Loi Godal Iman of Gedusha. The Ger is a newcomer. He wasn't raised in holiness, as opposed to Evid Meshuchar, who's been around for a while, even in his Evid uh, estate. He was performing mitzvahs like an Isha, right? So why is it that a uh, Ger precedes the Evid? The reason, as said before, is Elo Zeha Yibuchlal Oro, the Evid, was associated with the curse from Noyach, Vezelo Yibuchlal Oro, as opposed to the Ger, who was free of that, uh, you know, component. Shola Talmidav. So the Talmidim asked, as Rabbi Lazar Berabit Tzaddik, Mipnema, why is it so that Hakoil, all our rushing, Ratzin, Lissag, Yeris, will freely marry a woman convert? But they avoid marrying a maidservant who is now freed. And also, is also considered a bona fide Jewess. What's the difference? Why? Amr Lemi says, the reason is Zuhaya Bakal Aur because the Shivcha was associated with the Aur, like we find by Ray Avram Avinu when he told his uh Evid Eliezer. Eliezer Evid Avram, the greatest of the great, right? He was uh Doilo Mashka Materis Rabbi, he was the greatest Talmud of Avram Avinu. So despite his high stature in terms of the Torah, etc., but fact is Avram told him, Listen, sorry, uh, my my son Yitzchak could not marry your 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 family, your daughter, because Ain Baruch Mizdabek Ba'ur. Because Eliezer has Baruch and you're, uh, you're connected with Ar, so it's just, uh, you know, in his genes. In any case, that was the answer here as well. Zuhi Sabachal Ar, because the Mishach Reres, being a former Shivcha, was associated with the Ar of Azu, as opposed to the uh, Mish uh, Giyaris. Lohi Sabachal Ar, she never uh, was connected to the Ar. Dabar Achar, another reason for that uh, preference. Zuhi Sabachal Shimur. The Gyeris was presumed to have been guarded in terms of improper interactions. Especially Rashi says that she intended on converting, so she was sort of anticipating. Vizulo Hesu Bechaskas Shima, as opposed to a Shifcha, free for all. There's no way of knowing about her experiences. Sholot Talmidov Esra Belezer, furthermore, the Esra Belezer. Ma, why do we find another uh, distinction between animals? Hakel of Makir is Kainai, a dog recognizes and is loyal to his uh, owner as opposed to a cat who doesn't seem to be familiar with his owner as a dog is the chatul is koine why is that why why is the cat sort of uh, prone to forgetfulness Amr he says I'll explain to you why you see as we're going to see later when a person eats food that was um, nibbled from by a um, you know leftover uh, mouse food 
it's detrimental to one's um, memory, to one's ability to retain information. So he says that's the answer for the cat as well. Even if a person merely eats mimasha achbar echol, leftovers of a of a um, a, a, a you know a mouse's meal, misha keach, it triggers forgetfulness in the person. Certainly, ha'echol achbar atzmai, the cat who actually eats the mouse himself, certainly is infected with that uh, forgetfulness syndrome. Al chaskam v'kama, that's why he sometimes uh, disregards. And ignores his owner. Shalot Talmidav Shabbalezer. They asked him another question regarding mice. Mipnema. Why is it so that all disdain mice? It's like something repulsive. I call Muslim Bachbarim. They always you know, chase him out, and he's just so prone to being victimized by people. Why? More than other animals. Why? He says Mipnei. You know why? Shesuran Ra. They have bad, bad nature. They're just destructive. Maihi. In what way? Rav Amafilu Glimi. Even the garments that don't taste too too good, I can't really have from it. They bite it, they chew it, they ruin it. The glim a gaitzi they chew. Rav Papa Maflu shoves a mar even the uh, handle of a hoe. Gaitzi they'll chew and destroy. Continues the Gemara Tanurabon on the topic of items which can either uh, be uh, beneficial or detrimental to one's. A memory and his ability to retain Torah. There are five items that are meshach masalim that make a person forget his learning. Number one, ha'ochel if one eats masha ochel achbar, leftover food from which a um, you know a, a mouse had eaten. Umasha ochel chatu, leftover cat uh, food. Ochel leiv shableim eats the heart of an animal. Ochel bazeisim is accustomed to eating olives once in thirty days. Ochel shesimayim shoshir rochiti eats the uh, drinks the water. I was left over from washing. Baruchetz Raglov Zogab Bazui washes his feet one on top of the other. Rishem some add Afamaniach Kelev Tachas Menar Shoisav. He uses his clothing as a pillow, as opposed to Chamisha Dvarim. The following five things: Meshiv Masalimud will actually restore his forgotten learnings. So even after the fact, you can re retain it by engaging in the following five things. If one eats pas b'chamen, bread baked on, uh, on on coals, if kolsh kim b'chamen atzma, certainly if he eats some of the coals themselves. Vayichal beitzim gulgalus b'le melch eats a partially boiled egg without salt. Vayragul b'shemen zayis, he's accustomed to consuming olive oil, so the olive itself is bad, but the oil is good. Vayragul b'yain b'samim, he's accustomed to drinking wine and smelling b'samim. Vashay samayim shoshir isa, he drinks the leftover water. That was used to making in making a dough. Some add afa toivel. It's by melech va'oichal. He dips his finger into salt and samples the salt. Harogel b'shem zayis. That was the item we just mentioned. Olive oil. This is a positive thing. Say yehel rabbi yechanan. This uh, supports rabbi yechanan's statement, who draws to this irony. The Amar rabbi yechanan rabbi yechanan says k'shem shazayis m'shachayach limis shoshim m'shan. Just like the olive itself, if consumed on a regular basis, can actually make a person forget his learning. Of seventy years, kachsham and zayis. Conversely, the olive oils. So after you bash the, uh, <laughs> the olive itself and you subdue the negative elements within it, the klipas and the etzah. Now you have the pure olive oil. That will actually restore, restore forgotten learning. Kachsham and zayis meishav limud. That he may have forgotten already seventy years. Shel shivimshon v'ragel v'gayin v'samim. Those things are good. We say rubber that it's a riot to rubber them a rubber. Cham wine and fragrances. Pikhan may be smart, may be wise. If you do it, you know the shem shemaim, you can bring out, you can reinforce a person's um, intellectual abil- abil- abilities and hatzlach and Torah. But tevel is boy be melach. Omer shlok shuba achas provided he only dipped in one finger. Ketanoi, as we find in a rice, or bido aimer achas leshtaim. It only works when you dip one finger and you take the salt, but not with two fingers. Or bido aimer shtaim with two fingers leshalosh and not three. The siman chmitz in order to remember these two opinions that it's one, or according to the other sheet, a two. Fold over your chmitz finger, which is the fourth finger. So ignore the thumb, right? So just fold the fourth finger. 
So you have one finger to the right, the pinky, and two fingers to the left. So you know these are two shittas, one finger into the salt or two. Uh, Sora Dvaram says the Gemara, there are ten uh, practices that are kashim limun, that actually are detrimental to one's ability to one's interfere with one's ability to understand and comprehend the very Torah. However, after a person walks beneath the uh, camel's saddle, the koshka and certainly tachas hagomel atzmai beneath the actual camel certainly worse. For every person, a malam person walks between two camels that are side by side. For every he walks between two women that are interacting with each other. Mishnei Noshim. For each of us, Mishnei Noshim. Likewise, a woman who passes between two men. For every mitachas reich rashi nevel, he walks down the street where there's a foul odor coming from a carcass. For every tachas agesha, or he walks beneath a dry bridge. Shlei overlap ma'im tach tach to ma'im mem yaim. It's been forty days with no water under that bridge. Vayichal pas shloi bishal kol tzarka eats bread which wasn't fully baked. Vayichal basar eats the um, meat out of the uh, mixing spoon. Mizuam alistra. Vashoi samam samayim averes bezakvare. So he drinks water from that stream running through the cemetery. Mustakol pnei amesi gazes at the face of a um, deceased person. Yishayim some add to be careful of afakuri. Likewise, if one reads ksav the uh, protruding letters which were hewn out on the, uh, on the Matseva, on the, on the monument, shall go back ever upon a grave. They don't do it today. Today they either invert it or it's just, you know, we think. Tanarabana, we learned Tanarabraisa. Now we shift to various levels of covet, of honor and respect that are um, granted to individuals depending on their rank, on their level of leadership. So the ultimate is the Nasi, right? The ultimate leader, Shanasi Nichnas, when he walks into the base of Medrash, all rise, Kolam, everybody jumps up on their feet. Ve'ein yoishv, they will not sit down. At shu oimer lehem shvu until he turns to them and says, "Take a seat." Kshav bezin nichnas, a notch down is the av bezin, the head of the uh, the court. So when he comes in, the covet isn't as as widespread. Oisim lo yishur achas mikan, vishur achas mikan. As he walks through, so one row of people to the right, one to the left, they get up. And that's it. Achiyeshev and Kaimei, they stay standing until he takes his seat. Next level is a Chacham, an outstanding scholar, the Rav of the city, Shachacham Nechnas, when he walks in. So they do the, you know, like the wave. Echad Oymev, Echad Yeshev, he stands, he sits, he stands, he basically, as he's walking through, they stand up, and when he passes, you can sit down. So anybody within four armies has to stand up until he passes and moves on. Achiyeshev and Kaimei. So the last ones, you know, remain standing until he actually sits down. What about Bnei Chacham? The sons of the Chacham, who aren't really Chacham on their own right. We tell the Chacham, or students of Chacham, still, uh, you know, in training. So it depends. Bezman Shirabim Tzrichim Lehem. So, when, you know, they're somewhat learned and serving the public in terms of their knowledge and abilities, right? Mafsin al Rashi Ha'am. So they're allowed to actually come in, even once everybody is, se- is seated. So it looks like they're walking, you know, over everybody's heads. So although it's not, you know, so respectful in terms of the crowd, they're allowed to do that because they're considered, uh, you know, prominent people, and they can come in at will. Yotza. Now, if one of these individuals had to leave Litzorich to take care of his personal needs, you can't just, once again, he can come back in, despite the fact that everybody's sitting. He used to sit on the floor, right? And by walking in, it looks like you're sort of, you know, projecting, you know, your hierarchy over everybody. You can do that because they left for a need. It was inevitable. What about the children of Chachamim? Right? So their fathers are appointed as leaders. So what about their kids? Bizman Shlam Das Shmoya. So if these kids have the mental capacity to hear to understand their father's you know, lectures, Nichnasim Vyoshim Fnaviem. So when they come and they sit facing their fathers. Vachrim Kapiyam and their backs towards the public. Because they're facing their father and listening. Bizman Shainlam Das Shmoya. But if they don't have the ability to understand what their father is saying, they're too young or 
So in this case, they shouldn't be sitting with their backs to the public. So although they sit down in front of their fathers, but they flip around. In this case, they face the general public. So just as in the Besa Medrash, these children will sit with their fathers. It's not considered you know, an affront to the general public because they're coming to keep their father company and coming to you know, nurse from their fathers. So likewise, in a Besa Mishta, at a wedding, at a public event, likewise, they can come and accompany their fathers, sniff him, they're sort of add-ons to their fathers. Basically, they sit near their fathers and this actually enhances the covet of their father. Omar, let's go back to what we said. Yatzal Tzarech. If one of these fellows had to leave to tend to his personal needs, we don't lock him out. He can come walk back in. Nichnas Veshivim Kaimai. Omar, probably Omar, it's only true. Ella Litktanam. If he went out to take care of his small personal needs, because in this case it's an accident, he couldn't, you know, anticipate it, and uh, you know, it was inevitable. Aval, but if he's going out to take care of big personal needs, Likdoilim. Loy, in that case, he shouldn't be doing it, right? He can't come back, walk in like that, because he shouldn't have uh, come to it. Havalil Meduk Nafshim Yikuri, because he should have examined himself, meaning he should have prepared himself before coming into the shear, rather than having to disrupt, you know, the system in and out. Damar Vidam Arav, as we learned, the person uh, has the ability and should, in fact, anticipate accordingly. Loy Lo Milam Adadam Atzma, a person should uh, train himself, lahashkam laharif, to attend to his uh, needs in the morning, at night. So once in the morning, once at night. Kadeshle Yisrachik. This way, he doesn't have to uh, find a place and, and, and you know travel out during the day because there are outhouses were you know outside the area. So uh, ideally, a person should train himself at set times. Apparently, it's something that one per, per, a person could uh, anticipate and 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 and, uh, and uh, schedule. So they should have done so. So as the Gemara actually, but but nowadays things have changed. The Chosha Alma weakness has arrived. People's bodies are weaker, and you can't really expect a person to be so you know organized. Afilu, like Doilim Nam, even if they went out to tend to their Doilim, it's also good enough reason to let them back in without you know uh, without a fuss. Rav Lezer Tzaduk Eimer Af BeMeisam Mishta Oisam Oisam Snifim. So we learned that even at a wedding, even at a Mishta, these children are allowed to sit, you know, up in the Mizrach with their fathers. A Marava, that's only true of a with Two conditions have to be met. It's during their father's lifetime and the presence of their fathers. But otherwise, we don't, uh, we don't have to give cover to these children. So basically, the cover giving to them is a sort of an extension of the cover that we give to their fathers and therefore only when they're around in their in their presence. So we just finished a whole long, you know, presentation depicting various levels of leadership and the levels of, of, of covet given accordingly. On Rabbi Yechanan, let's get some historical, you know, context to this price. Bimei Rabban Shimnam Liel Nishnus Mishnzu. This price was established in the days of the Nasi Rabban Shimnam Liel and the, the background of which, the story that led to it uh, is the um, subject of the next piece of Gemara that perhaps we should leave for the upcoming uh, the short off. We'll leave it for tomorrow, Rabbi Hashem. Okay, in a nutshell, we had uh, a sugi of, of Seder, of sequence. Yiddishkeit is about being organized. <laughs> Everything has its time and place. We spoke about the uh, Karbanes, which ones comes first. We spoke about the Chi of Lahachis, to save, to uh, uh, save a person in danger. Who comes first? We had the Ish, the Isha, we had the um, Koyin, the Levi, the Yisrael, all the way down the list. We discussed the mice and the cats, things which are the Shachech Limud, which, things which are enhancements for Limud and Zikorin. And then we had the, the list of, uh, of leaders and the levels of Kavid accorded to them. All the best to you, and that's Lachara.